it's Ashley and I'm back <laughs> with another reaction video. This is going to be a video from what, Col what Culture, which is a channel that I'm subscribed to. This is where I get most of these ideas from, other than my YouTube recommended. Sometimes I'm not always subscribed. But anywho, um, I am a lover of horror movies and they had a list of the top 10 recent horror movies you probably missed and um we're gonna go through the countdown and see if maybe there's one i miss that i probably will have to write down so i can check out or maybe you also miss them or you have seen them and you can comment down below if they really were great or if you thought they were a crock of shit <laughs> anyways um Let's uh, go. Contemporary years have seen so many films take horror to new and exciting places and introduce some amazing talent along the way. But unfortunately, that does not necessarily mean audiences have actually managed to see most of these movies. With so many titles gracing our screens, it makes sense that some do slip through the cracks, but that is exactly what we're Think here today this to is rectify. Ash? Looking at or the no, past Ash. 10 years yeah, of horror Ash. to define like recent accent. men, these are the movies that didn't stick their landing despite being downright excellent in their execution, offering something a little weird and wonderful in the process. If you've come looking for blockbuster titles, then you're going to have to adjust your expectations to receive a face full of cult practices, cursed pottery, and sexy shenanigans instead. Ah, horror. How we love you. <laughs> of course, this is not a definitive top 10, as there's plenty more out there that do fit the same bill. So, let me know your favorites in the comments section, too. In any case, by the invisible woman, Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 great recent horror movies that not enough people have seen. 10. A Dark Song. The occult has always been key for horror, but few films have ever attempted to present genuine occult practices in such a realistic fashion. Yet, this 2016 movie from writer-director Liam Gavin isn't afraid to go there. Catherine Walker stars as Sophia, a troubled woman who takes out a year-long lease on a remote Welsh mansion. There, she hires gruff occultist Solomon to guide her through an ancient rite. Which... Okay, first up, let's just say anytime anybody wants to rent out a remote or go to a remote area, it don't always, it don't, it don't ever go good, ever. It never goes well. And then what did they just say? She hired somebody to help her do a ritual. Which, if successful, allows the practitioner to commune with their guardian angel and make any requests. Oh, guardian However, angel. it is a long and is complex really? process which requires these two strangers to remain in the house for months on end. With dire consequences if they abandon the ritual. A dark song may test the patience of some viewers, but as it is a slow burn affair, far less sensationalized and effects based than similar occult themed thrillers. However, no, I was gonna say maybe it's kind of like The Witch, but The Witch had like tense moments throughout, which what she's saying doesn't sound like that's what happens in this movie but if you stick with it you will find your patience rewarded by an intriguing well-acted exploration of questions of faith will and morality and a handful of sinister twists for a bit of spice on top too lovely nine jug face Jug, Jug face. face from writer-director Chad Crawford Kinkle <laughs> is a seen peculiar, this either. unnerving and imaginative modern take on the oft neglected folk horror a subgenre. Whilst Midsummer and The Wicker Man might take prizes for the best of the bunch, I have not seen Midsummer. Um, my one friend on Facebook, well, we're friends in real life, but we mostly talk through Facebook now. She said Midsummer sucks, and she is also a horror lover, so I still haven't watched it yet. But I need, I'll get around to doing it. I know I will, because some people love it and then some people hate it. That special brand of countryside. The weirdness is hard to find done well elsewhere. So, in steps Jug Face. The film centers on an isolated, backwards pagan community whose bizarre customs see them worship a sacred pit into which members must sporadically be sacrificed. 
One member of the community crafts jugs bearing the faces of those who the pip wants. But when oh, young expectant no. mother, Ada, finds that the latest jug is of her, she tries to hide it and escape. It's quite an odd... <laughs> I don't think she'll get away with that. Maybe. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to work out well for her. Premise which will alienate some viewers for certain. But the strange new world the film presents is fascinating. Sadly, Jug Face is Kinkle's only feature film to date, and oh. annoyingly, it was retitled to The Pit for its initial UK DVD release. I guess Jug Face didn't quite have the same horror ring to it. I wonder why. <laughs> 8. I am not a serial killer. This 2016 adaptation of Dan Wells's novel casts Max Records as John Wayne Cleaver. Oh. Let's just say, I'm all of these movies so far I have not heard about nor seen. Mortician's son who is being diagnosed as a sociopath. Mad fears he'll wind up becoming a serial killer. While struggling to repress his own homicidal urges, he becomes fascinated with a series of bizarre murders in his usually uneventful hometown. And is Wait, did they? Oh yeah, they did say he's a mortician. I was going to say, of course, he works with dead bodies and he's afraid that he's a sociopath. Determined to identify and confront the culprit. Not unlike Wells' novel, director Billy O'Brien's film is a curious blend of psychological thriller and teenage angst drama. With a thick streak of jet black humor and some unexpected twists. In some respects, it is not too far removed in tone and content from Netflix hit Stranger Things. Just with oh. far less never-ending story. You can decide whether that's a good or bad thing. Se Seven, Pie Wacket. We Pie all get wackets. a little mad at our parents sometimes. That goes mm -hmm. tenfold for a girl struggling with the loss of her father and who's trying to deal with a mother's grief. Forced to move home away from her school friends and isolated by creepy woodland. What most of us don't do, however. Isolation, always a good theme, usually, for a horror movie. Usually. Up is performing a cult ritual to summon a supernatural entity that will take out Mother Deering. No. Man then have to deal with the consequences as time ticks Horrible down idea. to the inevitable. Pie Wacket is deliciously indie in its execution, favoring a brooding, dark tone and a sense of dread over flaunting any ridiculous demonology. Who's that bitch in the window? It is slow building and careful with the way it unfolds, and explores all the good, bad, and ugly of a mother-daughter relationship in the most strenuous of circumstances. If you want a quietly tense and disconcerting horror movie, then this is the one for you. 6. Nina Forever Some good old-fashioned sex-based indie horror, this macabre love story from Ben and Chris Blaine centers on a bereaved young man, Rob, who has attempted suicide following the death of his girlfriend, Nina. Attempting to move on, he begins a new relationship with co-worker Holly. However, just when things start to be working for the new couple, a somewhat unforeseen complication arises. Ew, Whenever what? they have sex, Nina returns from the grave to join them. Obviously, oh, this hell next thing is a no. <laughs> what? Oh my, what's... What was that movie? Mm, oh. I can't think of the movie. I'll try and insert a title or the the name of it or a picture. I'll do both, a picture and the name. <laughs> it stars that one girl from Twilight, Ashley Green. And it was kind of like the same thing, but I think it was a horror comedy. And I seen it and it was so stupid. <laughs> I was rooting for her after Twilight, but her career's not doing so good. But anyways... This movie sounds fucking, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny, but that's fucked up. <laughs> it was funny for that movie, but if this was a horror, that shit would be creepy and scary as fuck. Like, you're always gonna love me. Like, us. how can you be obsessed from the grave? Leave, let me leave my life. I have grieved properly. be. 
bit awkward. Man leaves Robin Holly with some difficult questions awkward. to ask about the future of their relationship. Whilst the premise might suggest a bawdy, trashy comedy, Nina Forever is a surprisingly mature and intelligent look at the problems of rebound romances, with an added jolt of gallows humour thanks to the zombie twist. It is bold, inventive, and more poignant than you might expect from a film which I have literally just described as an undead threesome. Trust me. <laughs> Five. John dies at the end. Oh, I've had this Season saved for so Don long, and I haven't watched it on Netflix and, and I think on Amazon has Prime. Has a banger with John dies at the end, with his 2012 adaptation of David Wong's cult novel bursting with energy. At a glance, Dave and John are a pair of standard middle American twenty-something slackers. Yet, thanks to the use of a rare and extraordinarily dangerous drug, they're in contact with alternate realities and otherworldly entities which ordinary people can't see. In the face of Sounds all manner of threats, human and otherwise, this very average duo find themselves unwittingly responsible for the fate of all life as we know it. While it unfortunately lacks Not the a responsibility budget to fully do justice to Wong's bizarre epic in terms of visual spectacle, John Dies at the End has an infectious charm thanks to the razor-sharp dialogue, the chemistry between its lead characters, and some excellent supporting turns. Two. Four. Theater. A South Korean horror movie movie that will leave you as disgusted as it does perplexed, Pieta does not get mentioned half as much as it should do considering just how gnarly this movie The guy they just showed walking down the steps. Oh, I just got done watching a drama with him in it. Uh, the King Eternal Monarch. It was really good as a sci-fi um, show. Well, it had aspects of sci-fi in it. It was really good. Yes. Telling the tale of a brutal loan shark whose living function is to hurt people for their repayments, he is faced with a woman who claims to be his long-lost mother, with the pair reconnecting as he continues his work across the movie. It is not a straightforward genre movie, but rather one that intertwines Asian horror with drama in increasingly gut-wrenching ways, and is not afraid to get all too... That's the one thing I that uh, Korean dramas and movies do really well is intertwining different types of genres instead of sticking to one genre throughout the whole film. Oedipal in the process. Pieta is gross, to put it frankly, but it is so well made and provides such a stark commentary that it is only fair to give it the praise it deserves. 3. Spring Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, the guys responsible for eerie indie chillers like The Endless and Resolution, did some of Never their best those. work with Spring. Taking their specific homebrew of indie romantic drama and Lovecrafty and horror, this is a thoroughly surprising and hugely effective movie that way more people should have seen. Evan is struggling to find direction, so impulsively flies to Italy in search of some life experience. This he finds when he crosses paths with Louise, a mysterious woman with whom he quickly becomes infatuated. However, there is a lot more to her than meets the eye. Don't art. do it. <laughs> if you like deep cosmic backing to your horror and a sense of existential dread in place of overt scares, then this will absolutely tickle your pickle, as these guys are the best at it. But if you don't, then, I don't know, give it a try anyway? There is a reason <laughs> these pair of filmmakers are ones to watch. Two, Starry Eyes. Another excellent but underseen effort from 2014 this film from Kevin I don't know Holt if you guys are going to be able to hear this but that is my mom upstairs search for fame and glory in Hollywood and just like the juxtaposition of the CD underbelly and its glamorous reputation this film is equal parts stylish you know what other movie kind of reminds me of this that I seen that was actually really good it was like psychologically kind of like fucked with me uh neon demon it had Dakota Fanning's little sister in it. Oh, uh, shit. I can't think of her name. Um, it was, I seen it on, I think it was, I watched it on Amazon Prime. Um, I don't know if it's still on there, but that was a really good uh, show. show. That was a really good movie, and the uh, ending was like, it got me. So I would check it out if you're interested in like psychological horror. and grizzly. We follow Sarah, an ambitious up-and-coming actress struggling to get her foot in the door. 
When a casting call unexpectedly turns in her favor, Sarah finds herself invited to meet with the seasoned producer for the lead role in a horror movie. Don't she might girl. think all of her prayers have been answered. But it soon becomes apparent that, lady that she looks may like she's up to some evil shit. Much more than she intended. A powerful, atmospheric piece with an intoxicating central performance starry eyes also makes for somewhat poignant a pentagon viewing, that might not be working out very well revelations coming out of the entertainment industry one he i was gonna say she looked like um amelia clark this then when they showed her with the red lipstick on he never died he never died is a delightfully unexpected genre Genre bender, which proves to be as hilarious as it is thrilling. With oh, a what's his name? Best performance it? from leading man Henry Rollins, Henry whose Rollins. acting achievements hadn't necessarily measured up to his music, writing, or spoken word performances before this. Rollins is Jack, an anonymous retiree in an anonymous American town, doing his utmost to get through day to day life with as little social interaction as possible. <laughs> However, Jack's shady past has a habit of catching up with him, frequently landing him in considerably more trouble than he would like. A run in with some local criminals threatens to escalate, but there is one major complication. No matter what anyone does, Jack is seemingly impossible to kill. And an unorthodox <laughs> blend of supernatural horror, black comedy, and gangster thriller, oh, yes. he never died, maybe in a Black comedy production but in this instance it never feels constrained by its low budget as it keeps things squarely centered on the characters and dialogue and it is all the better for it too okay so no not much to say after watching the video other than all of those movies really did sound uh, interesting I wanted I want to see uh, John never dies because that looks hilarious um, starry-eyed because uh, I enjoyed Neon Demon and uh, too bad my memory is not that great I just remember those two um, off the title e oh the one with the guy who thinks he's a sociopath he might be a sociopath that one looks kinda good um, which ones piqued your interest um, what are some other good horror movies that you think I should check out like leave any recommendations below I We'll try to get around to watching them. Maybe I'll do a review on them. Maybe I won't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but thanks for watching the video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. If you want me to get close to you. Just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do.